Once I've created my polygons and their by grid code and I have a new empty sample column, I need to calculate the number of samples per polygon inside each of my polygons to get my strata correct. And so I do that by selecting by attributes. I'm going to do this type by type and I want to select then the strat poly, a new selection, and I'm going to add the claw because I only want those that have a grid code equal to 1. And so I'll add this and run that to get just those polygons that are in my flattest level. And then I'll right click and calculate the field. And remember, I want to calculate the number of samples to be equal to this formula we've talked about. You have the poly area times the total number of samples we want in that flattest area, which is 72, divided by that total area that you have in your um, small flat area in code 1. And for me, that's 103.3. .3. So what I'm doing is I'm scaling the 72 in the polygon area divided by the 103.3. .3. Now this will total the sum of the poly area will total up to 103.3. .3. So when I sum the number of samples, it'll be 72. But this big polygon will get most and little polygons will get from 0 to just a few. And so I'll go ahead and run that. And you'll see then it calculates for those selected polygons only, the ones only, the number of samples in each of the polys. So this big poly again is going to get the 72 and the little polys will get less. I'll do that again then selecting in the select by attributes for a new selection, adding the clause for the grid code equal to 2. And I'll do that same kind of calculation on the ones for two. I'll just substitute in the higher number, 214 samples in total, in the higher summary area, in my case about 297.5 square kilometers, into that same formula until I have all of these filled. So they'll calculate a sample for each of those. Now once I have all my samples assigned for every polygon. Some will get zero, some will get a lot, depending on their size. I want to make sure that I clear any attributes that are selected, any, any rows that are selected, any polygons here, because otherwise the next operation will apply only to the selected polygons, and I want it to be select for all the polygons. So if I deselect all the polygons, then the default will be apply this create random points to all of them. So I have this create random, oops, again, if I could only type. Um, and then I want to specify an output location and an output um, data layer. Uh, I want to specify a constraining feature class. In this case, I'll go use the strat polys. And I want to use a field to stratify by. And so I have to make sure that I give the field there. And samples is the field. The minimum allowable distance, I don't really care. I could keep them from being any closer than, I'm sorry, 10 meters from each other. In this case, you want some small number and then go ahead and run. So what this is going to do is apply random points. It's going to get the number of points in each of these features from this field using the constraining polys and strat poly. And so if I d have done this correctly, I should get a lot more points as I can see here in this very a uh, large steep area, which I do, and I'm going to make these smaller so we can see them better. Um, and I then basically have a much higher sample density in the steep area than I do in these flatter areas. So you can see this higher frequency. There's a little bit higher frequency here in this uh, um, intermediate steepness, although it isn't as apparent, and there's a fairly low frequency down here in the uh, in the completely flat areas. So.
That's how I get a stratified random sampling. And then afterwards we ask you to get the average values sampling for this. And you should get a much higher average value because we've weighted the sample here towards these uh, steeper areas, which also happen to be in the more mountainous area.